Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leaf code question, populating next right pointers in each node. All right, so let's first try to understand what the question is. I think it's a little bit confusing. So let's just go through it step by step. All right, so over here, we're going to be given a perfect binary tree. So in a perfect binary tree, all of the leaves are on the same level and every parent has two children. The binary tree has the following definition. Okay, so uh, if this is a little bit con uh, confusing, let's just look how it, uh, see how it looks like in Python. All right, so in Python over here, uh, we have a class called node and each node represents a single node inside of our tree. So over there, we have uh, four attributes. So we have self.val referring to the value of our tree node. Then we have left and right, which points to the left pointer and the right pointer. Now, the new thing that we have over here, which you might not have seen, and which is specific to this question, is the self.next uh, attribute. So what self.next means is basically whatever value is to the immediate right of it. So by right, I don't mean the right child, but instead I mean the exact right. So just to kind of show you what I mean is basically in this case, the so the dot next uh, attribute, so for one, the next attribute would be null. Similarly, for two, the next attribute would be three. And for three, the next attribute would be null. And finally, let's just look at this once more. So for four, the next attribute will be five. For five, the next attribute will be six. For six, it will be seven. And for seven, it will be null. All right, so hopefully you understand what the next attribute actually means. So in this question, what we want to do is we want to populate each next pointer to point to its next right node. If there is no next right node, the next pointer should be set to null. Initially, all pointers are set to null, all right? So that's important. In the beginning, everything is equal to null, all right? So now, basically all we're doing, um, currently, let's just look at the very beginning, a uh, two would be pointing to null, right? But ideally, or in a correct definition, two should be pointing to three, and three should be pointing to null. So uh, by the ending of whatever our function does, we should end up with something which looks like this, okay? So hopefully you understood how the question works and what we need to do. And now we'll see how we can solve this. So to do that, um, I drew the exact same tree data structure over here. And one thing I just want to kind of reiterate is the fact that whatever tree we get, it's going to get be a perfect binary tree, okay? What that means is that every root has two children and the leaves are always going to be on the same level, right? So we won't have something like this, right? They're always going to be at the same height or level, whatever you call it. So we always have a perfect binary tree and that makes it a lot easier for us. All right, so as with most uh, tree-based data structures, we have two ways to solve it. So we could either use a recursive or a DFS way, a depth-first search, or we could use a BFS way, all right? So I'm going to use a breadth-first search uh, kind of way to solve this question, but the other two methods work just as fine, all right? So in a breadth-first search approach, uh, if you don't know how it works, so let's just go through it real quickly. We're going to have a queue. And I'll just represent a queue using uh, a, a list over here, right? So this over here is going to represent our queue. So uh, real quickly, in a breadth first search, how it works is we're first going to go to one, then we're going to go this way. So then we go to one, then we get two, three, and then we would go this way, right? We go level by level, okay? So then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's how our breadth first search search is going to look like. All right. So now that we have this, like I said, the beginning is going to have the root value, okay? So we're going to have the root uh, starting off in our queue. So over here, we're going to have a variable called current. And current is just going to refer to whatever node we are currently on. So in this case, we're, how do we know which node we're on? So in the very beginning, uh, it's not going to have a value. But we, we're going to get its value by popping out whatever is at the zeroth index inside of our queue. So in this case, what's in the zeroth index? So one is in the zeroth index, we're gonna pop it out and that is going to be our current value. So current is equal to one. And just to kind of illustrate it better, I'll just write it over here, right? So current in this case is one, right? Perfect. So now we want to make it a next pointer, all right? So in the very beginning, what is one going to be pointing to? So the next pointer for one is going to be null, right? And that is correct, right? No, one is not pointing to the right of anything. So that stays as it is. So now what's going to happen is we know for a fact every root node is going to have two children right nodes, one on the left, one on the right. So in this case, one has a left child of two and a right child of three. So since it has a left child and a right child, we know that we are not at a leaf yet. 
And since that is the case, what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that the left child over here, which is 2, so the left child of 1, which is 2, is going to point to the right child of 1. So in simple words, 2 is going to point to 3. And that is correct. That is exactly what we want. And like it said earlier, 3 by default is pointing to null or none. Sorry, let me just write null so it's more consistent. And that's what we have so far. Now, one more thing we're going to do is we want to repopulate our queue, right? We're not done with it yet. So to do that, what's going to happen is we're going to add first the left child of 1, which is 2. And then we're going to add the right child of 1, which is 3, okay? So there is one step over here that is missing. But what I want to do is I want to kind of give you a more intuitive understanding of how we can come up with the solution. Okay, so now we have 2 and 3 inside of our queue. And the current value is now going to be whatever we pop out from the zeroth index of the queue, which in this case is well 2, right? So now we're going to have our current value equaling to 2. So let's just write it down over here. And now what's going to happen is the left node. So, so the first thing is we're checking if it has a left and a right node. It does, so that means we're not at a leaf. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to its left node, which is 4, and make it point to its right node. So 4 points to 5. Perfect, okay? So Again, like I said, there is something missing here, and I just want you to kind of uh, understand or find out what is missing. Okay, so now we need to add uh, its children, right? So its children are 4 and 5, and let's just add that to our queue. So we have 4 and 5, okay? So I'll just go through this a little bit faster. So now we're going to have current. Uh, we're going to remove this, and now it's going to have a value of 3. So we have 3. So now we're going to go to 3. We're going to go to its left child, which is 6, and 6 is going to point to 7. Perfect, okay? So now uh, we need to add its children, which are 6 and 7. But now all these uh, values, 4, 5, 6, and 7, they are all leaves. And how do we know that? It's because 4 does not have a left child and it does not have a right child. Both of its left and right children are equal to none. That means we have a leaf. So in that case, we can just stop, right? We don't need to do anything. We can just stop as it is. Okay, so perfect. So uh, that would so we would do 4, then nothing would happen. We would do 5, nothing would happen, 6 and 7. All those cases, nothing will happen since they are leaf nodes. Now, what exactly is the problem here? Okay, so let's just kind of uh, draw this more better. So five would be pointing to none, and seven would be pointing to none. Sorry, none. Okay, so uh, this part is correct. This part is also correct. Um, this part over here is also correct. But the only kind of mistake here is four points to five, but five over here should be pointing to six, right? So that's a problem. Why is five not pointing to six? And the answer to that is because we didn't actually have any sort of condition to do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a new condition in such a case that now 5 ends up pointing to 6. So let's see what that condition is. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to that step. Okay, so now I went back a few steps to where we have this point over here. And now the condition that we're going to be checking for, we're going to be checking for this each time. And it, basically what we're doing is we're going to check if current.next has some sort of value, right? So we're checking if current.next has a value. So what does it mean if it has a value? So in this case, when current.next does have a value, so let's just go back to the very beginning. So when current is equal to one, in that case, current.next does not have a value. So in that case, we are not going to do anything and we're going to leave it as it is. So now in this case, when you go to the next step, the current value now becomes two. So over here, current.next does have a value, right? 2 is pointing to 3. There is some sort of value. So now, in this case, what we're going to be doing is we want to join the nodes between the right child of 2 and the left child of 3, okay? And that is exactly what we're going to be doing over here, right? So what's going to basically happen is we have 5 and 6. And since the current node does have a next value, we're going to go to the right node of uh, 2, so the right node of 2 refers to this, and we're going to go to the left node of 3. Now, one question you might be having is, oh, actually, the left node of 3 is 6, okay? So one question you might be having is, how do we know it's the right node of 2 and the left node of 3? And the reason we know that is because we're first adding the left node to our queue and then the right node. So kind of following that, we can just come up with this, okay? So the left, the right node of whatever current is and the left node of current.next, so current.next.left. So we have 5 and 6, and now we're going to make a connection between them. So 5 is now going to be pointing to 6. So if you still don't understand it, I would highly recommend to further uh, increase the tree 
and kind of see how this relationship works. It should be a lot more clear, but yeah. All right, so now let's just go on to the code part. Hopefully you understood how this works and yeah. Okay, so over here we have our code and real quickly, this over here, like I said earlier, is the class node that we're referring to and that's what we're gonna be using. All right, perfect. So uh, as with most tree-based questions, the first thing we're gonna uh, take care of a case where the root does not have a value, right? When we don't even have a tree. So to do that, we can just do if not root. And in that case, we can just return the root itself, okay? So now we took care of that condition. And now we can assume that we have some sort of tree, right? And again, remember, this is going to be a perfect binary tree. So over here, we're gonna start off with uh, defining our queue. So for defining our queue, like we saw earlier, we could just use a list. Or another thing that we could do is we could use a uh, collections.dq. And I would prefer using that since it does have faster lookup times. So to get that, we can just do collections uh, and uh, you would be importing collections. So collections.dq, okay. So over here, we have our queue defined for us. And uh, to this queue over here, we're gonna be adding the root value in the very beginning. So to do that, we can just directly do queue.append and we're gonna be appending the root. Okay, so now that we have our queue defined for us, and it also has the root element inside of it, now we're gonna go inside of a while loop. So while queue, and what that basically means is we're gonna stay inside of this while loop until our queue exists, okay? So now the first thing we wanna do is we wanna pop out whatever is at a zero with index, and that is gonna be equal to our current element. So to do that, we have the function pop left, and that's the same as doing pop zero. Okay, so now we have our current node. So now what we're gonna check is, we're gonna check if the current node is a leaf. And how do we do that? Well, a simple thing we can do is we can check if it has a left and a right node, okay? So if current.left and current.right, and in that case, we can just directly actually go into this assuming that it is not a leaf. And if you wanted, actually, you could remove one of these conditions because uh, since it is a perfect binary tree, if we know that current.left exists, then for a fact, current.right is also going to exist, okay? So let's just leave one of them. So if current.left. So now we can go inside of this, and what we're going to do is we're going to first point current.left.next to current.right, okay? So that is the same as this part over here, right? Pointing the 4 to 5, that is what we're doing currently right now, okay? So to do that, current, now we're going to go to its left node, and we're going to add it to the next attribute, and that is going to be equal to current.right. All right, perfect. So now over here, what we're gonna be checking is we need to check for this condition, for the five pointing to six. So to do that, like I said earlier, the first thing we're checking for is we're checking if current.next has a value, right? So if current.next is not equal to none, then in that case, we're gonna go inside of this over here. And, uh, and the check that we're doing over here is basically we're gonna go to current.write.next and what exactly is that gonna to point to? So current.write.next, so current.write, that is the five over here, and dot next, so that is gonna be equal to current.next.left. So in simple words, current.next, so two goes to three, and we're taking three's left element, which is six, okay? So that's exactly how we're pointing that, and that's it. And now all we need to do is we need to add its children to the queue. So to do that, we're just gonna do queue.append, and we're gonna append current.left, and we're also gonna be appending current.right. So q.append current.right, and that should be it for our solution. And obviously at the very ending, we need to return our root value. Okay, and that should be it. So let's submit our solution and let's see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, our submission was accepted, and there's one small thing you could do. Uh, I don't know if it's really necessary. So over here, we're checking if it is not a child, right? So if something is not a child, what we can do is we can actually break out of it because once we find out one thing is not a child, that means that everything after that is also going to be a leaf. And we know that again because it is a perfect binary tree. So over here, if that is not the case, what I'm going to do is I can just directly return root or instead we could just break out of the while loop statement. So submit this and this should also get accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching guys. Do let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.